Okay, hello everyone. Right, a slightly different setting for Wisdom uh, Wednesday. We're going to go with our story time at the dinner table. So, there you go. You're going to say hello. Can I say hello. There you go. So, you got the cash from girls. All we're going to do Wisdom Wednesday. I'll do the interactions. Lauren's going to do the interactions. There you go, we've got Bruce if you can't see him as well. So, no talking while your mouth is full. Sit nicely and eat your dinner. Thank you. Okay, right, so we are continuing the chapters of the empty pan. And today uh, we are, oh, it looks like we're about halfway through the book now. Look at that. Uh, we are reading about Keon and Zuki. And these are two words that you will hear often uh, used in our dojo. And uh, previous few words, previous few chapters we've done, uh, have been words that we practice. Uh, we practice uh, the uh, Seisan and the uh, Mokoso and those aspects that we spoke about in the previous one. But we don't necessarily use the words. I don't use the words in the dojo, but the practice is still there. So uh, let's go with Ki on first. So Ki is a phonic character. The bottom means earth. The top indicates pronunciation and also means beginning. The beginning of any earthwork is its foundation. Hon is a pictograph and a diagramic character. It represents a tree with the branches going up and the roots uh, going down. The mark across the roots indicates the meaning of root or base. So foundation with a, with a tree. Interesting. So let's find out what Keon is all about. So uh, advanced students will be familiar with Keon. Uh, I know some uh, karate schools practice Keon much earlier on in the grades, but it's something that we save uh, for, for, yes, advanced students uh, in, our, in our syllabus. So Keon, which means basics or rudiment, rudiments, is made up of two characters. Ki means foundation or root. At the bottom of the idogram, is the radical Tuchi, which means earth. Tuchi, I think I've said that right. Right, and Hon means base, or at the foot of. It is made up of the ideogram for tree, with a dash at its bottom indicating its base. The two characters repeat a single basic idea. The rudim, rudim, what's that word there, CC? How do I say that word? Redance, redance. Yeah, you know when you're involved when you're asking your teenage kid to <laughs> say a word. It's an indication of the importance uh, Japanese place or mastering the redundancy. basic... Redundancy. Ah, this redundancy is an indication of the importance Japanese place on mastering the basic knowledge and skills of a discipline. Japanese educators have traditionally believed that only through, uh, only by Thoroughly mastering the basics can a student develop the skills and knowledge necessary to move on to more sophisticated, creative levels of a discipline. It is therefore not surprising that a traditional Japanese martial art such as karate also stresses the importance of basics. Like the two characters that make up Kion, basics in karate also work from the ground up. The foundation of all karate technique lies in the way in which one stands. Karate stances are designed to teach students to fully utilise the lower torso in both training and actual combat. The difficult stances strengthen the legs and hips, and by mastering them you can create more power in your kicks and punches. In fact, not so long ago at the... At, in fact, not so long ago, a beginning student of karate would not be allowed to practice anything but a handful of stances. The karate stances can be painfully tiring when held over a long, prolonged period of time and the student had to learn to endure this pain and exhaustion before going on to further study. This period sometimes lasts weeks, even months, after which the student was finally taught to walk. 
After that, the student devoted an equally long period of period to just walking back and forth. Only after mastering stand and walking was the student taught to block, punch and kick. As you can imagine, the curriculum tested the student's patience to the extreme. Instructors felt this developed character and at the same time weeded out those lacking the mental, uh, mental to succeed in karate. In, re in recent in years, especially in the West, there has been less emphasis placed on basics. Certainly it would be difficult for a proprietor of a karate school in today's fast paced society to attract or retain new students if all they were taught for the first few months was standing and walking. However, just as a building cannot stand without proper foundations, and as a tree falls over without its roots, advanced karate techniques cannot be mastered without mastering the basics first. As you are taught a variety of techniques, therefore you should constantly keep up your practice of your stances and footwork, your kion or base. There we are. We refer to uh, kion as more of a one-step style uh, sparring in our syllabus. Uh, but we practice uh, the whole syllabus with the fundamentals of, of the basics, the foundations. Uh, you look at our syllabus and it's built in a way uh, to, to complement that, uh, like it's in a fast-paced uh, action world now. Okay, So, what is Tsuzuki or Zuki, as it's otherwise pronounced? Tsuzuki is a combined meaning character. The top is a picture of the opening of a cave. At the bottom is a dog rushing out of the cave. Together they mean a sudden thrust or attack. The second character is the Japanese symbol Kai, adding a noun ending to the word. So, Tsuki means thrust, jab, or especially in karate, punch. Combined with another word, Tsuki is often pronounced Zuki, as in Gaikazuki, uh, or reverse punch. A drawing of a close, closed fist is used as a logo by many karate schools and the simple punch is the most fundamental mode of attacking karate. It is the staple of karate practice. Zuki! Okay, Jodan Zuki, Gakka Zuki, uh, Kaga Zuki, Aga Zuki with uh, the advanced students of the junior age group, uh, intermediate and up, we switch karate syllabus completely to the to the traditions of the Japanese. So we're assisting your martial art knowledge here. There is a saying in karate, one strike, certain kill. In fact, a large part of training is conditioning your hands so that they are able to deliver blows power enough to render, opponent, render an opponent unconscious and also to withstand the shock of such a strike's impact on your hands. This is done by doing push-ups on closed fists, and by striking a heavy bag on makawara, a vertical post wrapped in rope. In conditioning your hands, however, be aware of safeguards against damages, repeated stress can inflict on your bones and joints. The true meaning of the saying, however, is far more than simply gaining the ability to harm others. It reflects the truth that in life there are often no second chances. In self-defence, this is true in the most practical and Im uh, imitating uh, immediate sense. If you do not make use of every opportunity def to defend an attacker, the consequences may be dire. But the same truth holds in other, more common aspects of life. Most people have experienced missed opportunities, opportunities, shying away from a job promotion because it involved travel to an unfamiliar country not expressing romantic feelings towards another, and never known if they may uh, have been neutral. A moment's distraction in a race resulted in defeat, a lack of pre pre preparation resulting in a failed examination. These examples illustrate the importance of staying alert for all the opportunities that come your way, and being prepared to fully exploit them. Thus, when you practice your punches in karate, and you will practice this, practice them countless times. Strive to make each one as power, powerful as you can. Deliver each with spirit, as though you are really defending yourself. And each strike 
has to kill. Devote your attention to proper technique, maximising the opportunities with which your imaginary opponents present you. And as you do this repeatedly in your karate training, you will find that you are growing better able to maximise the opportunities with which life presents you as well. Mm. So okay, there you go. So, practice your punches to kill. One strike, one kill. This is the way forward. Go work hard. Uh, next week we are finding out what is Gary or Gary or Kelly and what is Kiai. I know what that. Yeah, she knows what it is, don't she? Not with food in your mouth, though. Uh, okay. So, uh, do let us know if you are enjoying these Wisdom Wednesdays. Uh, put a note down, say hello. Uh, and uh, you will find all the Wisdom Wednesdays saved somewhere where you're watching this. On our Facebook or our, Wis uh, or our uh, social media platforms or even uh, Inst uh, you know, Instagram is social media. YouTube. Is YouTube a social media? Is it classed as social media? No. Not really, is it? And YouTube. Uh, okay. And uh, we will continue the empty hand story. And yeah, it looks like we're exactly halfway through. Interesting. Peace out. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.